Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and today we're going to be talking about plumerias. Um, I've got here, um, I've got here a plumeria which I want to share with you, um, as you can see here, and I've got the label which you can read as well. This is going to be the Pacific Pearl, which is a whitish um, and yellow type flower, and. What we're gonna do in this video is a variety of things. We're gonna actually um, coat um, some of the plants with ivory organics to protect the trunks from sunburn, uh, as well as insects and rodents. We're also going to be using it to basically protect the sunblock, um, a dilute sun sunblock spray. And there's another thing I wanna share with you, and this is um, a plumeria that we actually uh, inherited from someone. And I wanna share with you the issue over here. If you can take a look, I'll bring it to you. And if you take a look over here, you'll actually notice that the trunk is actually rotting down here. And I'm actually, I brought my scissors here so I can stab it so you can see that it's actually um, rotted. And this is an issue called root rot. And it started, and it started because primarily the soil that's around it has got a little bit too much moss in it. And what we're gonna do is actually improve the soil conditions. We're gonna save the stem and we're actually gonna turn it as so you can take a look at the top. It's actually starting to bud. It really wants to grow, but it's not gonna be able to grow um, past all this. Another important point I want to make while we're this close to each other is the outer skin is like the bark of the tree and not necessarily where the living tissue is but underneath the bark is where you'll actually find the cambium layers and the cambium layers transport the sugars and the waters from the roots to the upper plant and that's all been destroyed by this rot. It basically goes all the way around whatever I'm scratching on right here, I don't know if you see these scratches that I'm putting in, that's actually into the wood of the plant which has also been rotted. It's very soft um, so we're actually going to save this plant and actually turn it into a new plant, um, but it'll no, no way thrive in the condition that it's in right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pruners and I'm actually going to cut it right above. And actually if you want to come in so you can actually um, watch what I'm going to do here. A couple things I want to point out actually before I keep going. And the reason I actually picked this seat is I'm right behind this milkweed plant which attracts tons of monarch butterflies. The milkweed is the only plant that actually a monarch butterfly can lay its eggs on and its caterpillars can consume. Um, the issue with the plant that I've got here is they're a tropical variety. We're here in Southern California, so if you actually see tropical milkweed, let me show you what the flowers look like. So this here is the tropical milkweed. Take a look at those flowers. It's one of the most common varieties you'll actually find in your nurseries. Um, almost all of them are growing in the issue with the tropical milkweed is it's an evergreen plant. It's not, not a California native. And the issue is this plant actually stays alive through the winter and carries these spores that when the monarchs come and visit, if they come in the fall and in the winter, they're picking up the spores from this plant and it's actually infecting um, their life cycle and, um, and actually causing possible damage to their populations when the reason for planting this in the first place is to help is to help them and, and make them healthier. You can see there's quite a few bees that this plant's attracting, but I'm hoping over the course of the video, some of these monarchs will come and visit us. As So here we are here, um, back with our plumeria plant, and um, next to it is actually a wild um, tropical milkweed. It's actually seeded, and I wanted to also show you one more thing while we're over there, but stay there. I want to show you these seed pods that it actually um, produces. So here's a cutting off the plant, and as you can see, these are the flowers and the leaves. These are the seed pods. And once they dry out, out comes all of this fuzz. And at the end of all of these tips are the seeds. And the reason um, it's got all this white, these white ends is it's pretty much like the helicopter. It helps catch in the wind, and then that's how, they, and that's how they'll disperse. Here's actually some more. So you can actually just blow those away. 
and there that goes. I'm actually in the process of actually transitioning these tropical milkweeds out of the garden and actually planting California native specific species which actually die down in the winter and come back even more vigorously in the spring. And that actually coincides more um, appropriately with the monarch uh, migration. So if you've got tropical milkweed, try to get them out of your garden and start substituting them in for the California natives if you're here in California. If you're in other parts of the country, try to find the milkweeds that actually grow specific to your area. Um, so with this, we're gonna pull it out. Here we go. So we got that out. And then again, because this hasn't seeded, I'll actually recycle this entire plant into my compost um, bin. So I'm gonna deal with that later. And then if you can come in a little closer now, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna propagate this and turn this into um, a new plumeria plant. The first thing we can do is actually cut the root rot section part of the plant and actually take a look at that. This is wonderful. Not for the plant, but I didn't expect this. If you take a look in here, it's starting to rot out even on the inside of the plant. So we're gonna to have to cut even higher up. We need to get to where the green and the living tissues are. Take a look in here. Take a look right there. And you can actually look right into the trunk. It's all hollow. It's completely rotted out. So this is root rot. Um, when the plant's not healthy, and you don't have the right growing medium for the, um, for the plant, this is something that can happen. So again, since it's rotted in there, we're actually gonna cut up a little bit higher. So we're gonna go up about another inch and hopefully cut and you can actually take a look now. Watch that. It's dripping, dripping, oozing with milk. Um, and this here is the plant sap. So we've hit, um, we've hit the point where the life's at. What we're gonna do next is I'm actually gonna protect it now with Ivory Organics um, three-in-one tree guard paint. And that's this product over here, which I'll bring to you. And it reads Ivory Organic three-in-one tree guard paint. And it's a natural tree trunk barrier from damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. And it's for uses on roses, fruit trees, ornamental trees, and, and shrubs. And what we're gonna use it for right now is to basically protect this plant from any further desiccation. We don't want it to dry out. So we're gonna protect the stem here by opening this product. I actually had it mixed um, prior to the video, but we're just gonna mix that and take our paintbrush here. And we're gonna, just gonna take the plant stem. Hopefully you can see that here. And we're just going to paint the plant trunk all the way up. We can leave the top quarter inch alone but this here will now protect the plant from any desiccation. It won't dry out as, as, as badly and it'll protect it from any sunburn as it goes into summer. We're just gonna set this down here and we're gonna finish the rest of this, um, this project later on. And our next step here is I wanna prepare this soil. What we're gonna do with this is we're gonna transplant this plant, another plumeria plant, into the same spot. The reason root rot actually happens is a couple of reasons. One being it's the type of the soil. You wanna make sure that it's very porous. And to improve the porosity of your soil, you're gonna to wanna to use something like this here. And this here is perlite. And what perlite is, and I'll read it, uh, hopefully you can zoom in here. It says, it improves drainage and aeration. And what perlite does, if I can show you here, is it basically, um, it kinda of looks like snow, but it does not absorb water, it actually, um, repels water and it just as, as, as I just read it improves aeration improves drainage so here I'll actually um, add that here into this mixture over here into this pot we're gonna use that as a potting soil another thing we want to add is vermiculite vermiculite says over here I'm gonna try to find out where it says helps improve soil aeration and drainage so similar to perlite but this here actually absorbs water you can see um, it's actually got some water in there you can see what that is, and it's pretty much, um, so we're gonna add some of that, and what we're gonna end up doing is, is mixing these two ingredients together. So we got perlite, vermiculite. This is a great um, product to actually have, especially in the top inch of the soil, and then when it comes to making the rest of the potting mix, you're gonna wanna add a lot more um, moss. To so for the rest of the um, mixture you're going to want to add moss and then the moss will actually break down and feed the plant and, and feed the soil organisms um, and especially when you're gardening organically. So here we go. Let's take a look at the potting mix. What we're going to do here now, I'm going to set this soil over here.
We're gonna take this out. Here's another issue that I just found. Take a look what's happening here. So you can take a look at the root ball. Take, try to zoom in, zoom in here, try to see all of these roots. So the plant actually was doing quite well. One issue that I just um, noticed as I pulled this plant out and I wasn't expecting it is, the person that actually prepared this pot actually put wood chips at the bottom. And this is a huge no-no. You don't wanna put wood chips at the bottom. And the reason is, is these wood chips actually, um, for one, absorb the nitrogen out of the soil. And, and, and basically competes with the plant for the nitrogen. The other thing too is it causes something called um, an, um, anaerobic respiration. It actually consumes and takes out the oxygen out of the soil. You don't wanna put your wood chips at the bottom. A better um, solution, a better option for actually improving drainage um, near the bottom of the hole and, and the bottom of the pot and make sure again there's, I'm not gonna be able to get the sticker off, but there is a hole that's here at the bottom that actually does goes through the sticker. So we've got um, our drain hole right here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm actually putting my finger over it and then blocking it so you can actually see where the hole is, the drain hole. But what we're gonna do to actually improve the drainage is, see there? Is we're gonna take these ceramic pieces and we can actually take these pieces of the pot and actually put them at the bottom of the pot. If you can come and follow me here, you can actually see that I'm actually putting these at the bottom. And what this will do, is actually improve improve the drainage of, of, of the um, pot. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this perlite vermiculite mix and some of the soil that we can actually take away from here. We can put that here at the bottom. Take some of the perlite vermiculite and mix those all together. We got some moss. We can actually add some moss to the soil as well. And we can mix that in as well. Another option, instead of actually putting all of these different ingredients, is we can actually just use a product such as this. And this here is um, an organic and natural potting mix. And this here will contain all the things that we're pretty much putting into it. And if you take a look, you can see the white, the white um, flakes that are in here, which is the perlite got some vermiculite in there and it's got a lot of compost as well so we can use that as um, a mixture as well so we're gonna put that all together stir it up and now we're gonna get the plant what I'm hoping to discover with this now and again this is our um, plant that we're gonna be installing as you can see the variety is called Pacific Pearl and what we're gonna do here and actually, I'll read this uh, behind her as well. It says, Pacific Pearl Plumeria. The height will be anywhere from four to 10 feet. White flowers with yellow center. Good keeping quality, pleasant, strong fragrance. And the other thing about Plumeria also is they actually bloom more fragrantly in the evenings than they do, than they do in the um, afternoons. And the reason for that is, um, is that they attract a specific type of moth in the tropical areas um, that actually migrate at night. So, so that's something to keep in mind is they're usually more fragrant in the evenings than they will be um, in the afternoons. And so here we are with the plant. So we just pulled this out. There's a couple things we want to inspect here. First, the root ball. We want to make sure it's not root bound. Um, these bottom roots, you can actually um, wiggle around just to let them know that they're no longer pot bound and that they're going into a larger container. But at the very top, what I want to see is and sometimes at the nursery, they'll actually put too much soil on the very top of this. So I kind of want to see where the roots are actually starting. So I'm actually going to remove some of the soil on the top so we don't end up with another issue of root rot. And we're going to want to see where are the roots are actually coming off. You can see I've just removed at least an inch of soil and there's still no roots. Here we go, a little further. I removed almost two inches of soil now and we're still not at where the roots are coming out. So all of that moisture is going against the stem and this can actually be contributing to root rot for another year or in the years to come. So um, it's actually, here we go. Here we go. And now we're right at the roots. I'm re I've removed at least two inches of soil before I actually got to the root, which is right there. And you actually wanna keep the roots just a quarter inch um, below the soil level. So we're gonna put that in the pot. I'm now gonna get some more potting mix. And you can see even the potting mix that the nurseries are using 
if I can grab some of this off without the wood chip, you can actually see that it's got quite a bit of perlite in there, um, which is helping with the drainage. So we're gonna get that right up to there. And I'm gonna put that in. And we're gonna support it. We may actually need to put a stake in here because um, I've noticed that what they did in this container was it was mostly the roots were in the bottom um, two inches and then the top two to three inches were just soil that were actually supporting the plant in place and that may have contributed to the root rot for the person that actually grew this the first time and what we're going to do here is add some more soil as we get closer to the roots to keep the <coughs> compost and the moss from actually rotting the stem again we're actually going to add more perlite and vermiculite and that's actually a safer um, a safer mixture for this particular plant and to give it a longer and healthier life as it gets established. So here we go. We're gonna add a little bit more here. And we'll compress that. And then, it's actually quite stable. And again, the roots are just a quarter inch below the soil level. We're gonna put that back. And then one of the last steps we're gonna do is just water. Make sure you get a really good watering. You want to make sure that entire root ball is wet. And the last step here is we're going to protect it now from sunburn. I want to protect this entire stem. And what we're going to do here, and I'm actually going to use the white product. The white actually reflects more sun than the other colors made by Ever Organics, which are green and brown. So we can actually paint now the stem with the Ever Organics white. My solution. So I'm just going to hold this and we're just going to paint it all the way around. This here will actually prevent it again from any sunburn as we go into the summer months. It's an organic paint with organic oils. The oils actually repel insects from actually um, boring in through the tr tree trunk and into the living tissues beneath. And it also has oils to repel any insect, um, rodents that may um, dare to chew on it. And and voila, we're done. Let's put that actually up on the table. And we'll find a nice place to put that in our garden later on. Our next step here, now that this is actually dried up, is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to actually pot this. So we'll go back here next to the potting soil. We're gonna add some of the vermiculite and perlite to the bottom. So we, knows, we noticed that when we actually potted this plant that it was at least two to three inches buried deep in the container that we got from the nursery. So um, that was a big surprise. But now we've only got about two to three inches supporting the entire plant. As you saw, it was just the bottom two inches of that one gallon container that, was, um, that actually had the root ball supporting this plant. So what we're gonna do now is stake it. So I'm actually putting a, a stake right here. And when I stake any plant, I always tie my knot, knot onto the stake and not onto the plant. So I'm tying the knot as tight as I can onto the supporting bamboo stake. And then I'm gonna wrap the plant and I'm leaving a good inch, you know, to allow for growth in case this plant gets neglected over the next year or two, that it won't be strangled. But you do need to, um, you know, visit your plants as often as possible and see if there's any issues in your garden. But this here will actually keep it from toppling over in case there's any um, windy days out here. And then we'll just cut off the excess string and, and we're done. This here's the plan. I'll actually bring it closer to you if you want to see what I've done. Okay. And so the next thing we're going to uh, discuss is soils. And when it comes to potting plants, and I know this sounds obvious, but I see people making this mistake all the time. But for potted plants, you got to use potting soil. And if you're actually gardening in your ground, do not use potting soil because it actually has different ingredients and the differences actually can make a big difference for the performance of your plant. One example here is I've got here um, grow mulch, which is a two-in-one planting mix and, um, and it's basically used for in-ground plantings. This here is um, an organic base. Um, it's made out of trees and shrubs and it's got, I know some manure from various sources in here as well to provide the nitrogen. But it's a balanced compost with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, which are the macronutrients necessary for healthy plants. But this here is for your in-ground planting. Um, the difference being between this and the product next to me, which is um, made by um, Vigoro, is an organic and natural potting mix. And it says 
moisture retaining soil and what actually makes it moisture retaining is that it's got usually a lot of moss in it it's got a lot of um, vermiculite in it and um, and then it also has a lot of perlite to actually help with drainage so if you just use garden soil um, or using compost or just any other bag the issue is, is that these plants are going to dry out a lot faster usually potted plants need to be watered in the summer sometimes daily um, to every other day so by actually having a better quality soil you may be able to go um, an extra day or two without watering um, and again that's because of the moss and the vermiculite that's in the soil actually helping retain the water um, in between watering so again potting soil for potted plants and then the rest of your um, organic products and compost and amends for your in-ground pot. Even this one here that we actually did the transplant what I want to show you guys do show you that what we're gonna do is again we're gonna use this product here it's an Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint. It's a natural tree trunk barrier from damaging sunburn and insects and rodents for uses on roses, fruit trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. And usually, this product, and as you can see here, is painted white. And white actually offers the, the greatest amount of reflection when it comes to protection from sunburn. But the um, product also comes in brown and green, so if you're looking for a more cosmetic, um, it might be a better, more appealing um, color in your garden. But they all offer protection against insects. They all offer protection against rodents, um, and basically, you know, and repelling those insects from actually damaging the tree trunks and ultimately your plants. What we're also going to use this product for today is we're going to make a dilute sunblock that we can actually use to keep the plants cool while the roots now get established in their new homes. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open the can here, and we're just going to add to this water bottle here about a teaspoon or two. So we're just gonna put this in here. Put the cap back on, and shake it, and then just spray the leaves. And now we've basically created a dilute sunblock. We're in the month of June. So this year we'll now keep the plant cool. So it actually um, doesn't go into shock and actually damage the plant. Let me actually zoom you in here so you can um, take a look what the leaves actually look like now. So you can actually see the little drops of, um, of like the white organic paint that's on there. And it's also got the oils that will actually protect the plant from any um, possible pests while the plant's immune system and its strength is down. This will actually protect the plant until it actually gets established in the pot. So let me show you um, the next step now. So here we are now. We're just going to add now a rooting, um, a rooting powder. This here is made by Schultz and it's called Take Root. And we're just going to dip that in here. And that actually just coats now the bottom of it. What it does is actually stimulates root growth. And the other thing too using a rooting powder is it actually prevents rotting from happening. That's actually almost just as important as having the hormones that will actually stimulate the root development. And then we're just going to put that in the pot. We're gonna actually cover it with another two to three inches of soil. And this here is again a perlite vermiculite mixture. I'm gonna mix it with some of the soil, the potting soil we had before. And what we're gonna do once this roots is we're gonna adjust the plant into the next pot within the next upcoming month. So it should actually root within the next six to eight weeks. Once it does, we'll actually adjust the um, height. Right now it's about two to three inches in the soil. We may need to raise it so that, again, the roots are um, closer to the surface of the soil, not buried um, as that last plant was that we showed you where it actually suffered from root rot. And now we're just going to water the plant. And that's it. And now we just made a plumeria cutting. So one last thing I want to show you here is this plant over here. And here's another plumeria that we've been growing for the last couple of years. And what we're going to want to do here is um, if you take a look in here, you'll notice that the plant um, used to be about an inch higher in the pot. And what we're going to want to do is actually raise the soil level in here. And it's a good idea to do to all of your plants every three to five years. So we're going to improve, um, improve the height of it. I can see that the roots, by the way, and if you can come in a little closer, you'll actually see that the roots are right, right below the surface, um, right at the surface of the soil. So this is actually a great place for the roots to be. There's no root rot. You can see there's a little bit of um, the plants actually expanding and growing, evidenced by these cracks. Evidenced by these cracks in the tree trunk. 
and um, and you can actually see that this Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard paint, which is white, and again, it reflects the most amount of light. There's also green and brown, which also reflect um, sunlight, but the white actually, um, just by color, reflects more. But you can see the plant is growing. There's no latex in this paint, so it's not gonna you know, hold on tightly and affect um, the plant's ability to grow. And now we're gonna um, basically take this plant out of the container and add some more soil down below. Here we go. And again, wood chips at the bottom. A big no-no. Um, your, your options are either using rocks or, um, as we used earlier, we used um, some cracked, some cracked um, ceramic pots could be another option. I'm gonna add a little bit more to the perlite. And some more vermiculite. We're gonna remove any of the wood chips that are near the bottom. And this here, take a look at this, another, um, another weed of the tropical milkweed, which we'll also remove. And the plant will go right back into the container. Here we go. Oh. So we're just loosening the soil at the very top. And make sure those roots are still there near the surface. Something else to again, assist the plant with making sure that there's no root rot is add a lot more um, of the perlite. We're gonna add a little more vermiculite. And that'll actually prevent any root rot near the base of this tree. So we want to make sure that it's more of that and less of the compost. Do not put it, if you're actually going to add any wood chips to the surface, which will help with um, retaining moisture, make sure you keep it away from the tree trunk as well for the same reason is to prevent root rot around the plant. And we're done. We just repotted the plant. It'll be good for another three to five years in this container. Make sure you thoroughly water it and put it in the desired place in your garden. In this video, we actually potted a plumeria from a smaller container to a larger container, as we did here on the left. And then over here, we actually repotted a plumeria in the same pot, giving it another um, three to five years that it can continue to grow and, and get established in this pot. And then we also made a plumeria cutting out of one that was near death. It was a root rotted plumeria, and now we've given it another chance to, act to life. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like it, and most importantly, subscribe down below so you don't miss out on all the other Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard videos. Thanks for watching, and happy gardening.